Every so often, as a sex and relationship coach, I get to combine the best in science, nutrition, creativity, communication, and sometimes it gets to involve safety goggles. And this is one such story. My client, let's call him David, had been watching porn since he was a young man, and he had become obsessed with facials. And he very, very badly wanted to give the best, the biggest, the most explosive, the thickest facial that he humanly could to his girlfriend, uh, let's call her Sally. And Sally had some concerns. She wanted to be a, a, a partner who was down, but the thought of getting like some in her eye really freaked her the heck out. And so they enrolled me, sex and relationship coach, Kaylin V, and asked, how do we do a facial? And how do we do it safely? And so in this video, I am going to share with you how to safely be the recipient of a facial and how to safely give a facial and how to, by the way, very impressively give a facial using some well-kept secrets from the adult entertainment and porn industry. So stay tuned if you have ever wanted to be on the giving or the receiving end of turning a human being into a cinnamon roll. Get it? Cause it's like cream, human cinnamon roll. Let's go. Receiving ejaculate on the face can pose some potential risks. And here are a few of the dangers that you should be aware of. Number one, eye irritation and infections. Semen does cause irritation to the eye. Take it from someone who's been there, okay? When semen comes in contact with the eye, it can cause discomfort, it can ruin the moment, it can even cause an infection by coming into direct contact with the eye. So first and foremost, protecting the eyes. Number two, allergic reaction. If you don't know that your partner has an allergy to semen, this is not a great way to find out. Number three. STI transmission. There is a risk of transmitting any sexually transmitted infection through facials, particularly if semen comes into contact with any of the mucous membranes, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Maybe on a non-biochemical level, there could be shame or guilt that comes up. Part of what makes giving a facial and receiving a facial hot is that like it's a little degrading, right? Like it's kinky, it's taboo. Like if you love this woman or respect her at all, you're not supposed to put your jizz on her face, right? I think that is a risk that we should name and that we can protect for by having a conversation in advance and also after about what went right. So now that we know what can go wrong, let's talk about how to do facials safely. Number one, communicate and consent. Oh my God, subscribers of this channel will know that that was gonna be number one. Before engaging in any sexual activity, ensure that both partners are on the same page, know exactly what's about to go down, and have given their enthusiastic consent. She cannot consent if she doesn't know what a facial is. So if you just say like, hey, can I give you a facial? She might be thinking like, oh my God, a little mud mask action, some cucumbers for my eyes, kick my legs up. Hell yeah, baby, give me a facial. And then you whip it out and you jizz all over her face. She's like, uh, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't agree to that. You can't just like decorate me like a swirly cone, okay? If you're gonna do that, bring some sprinkles. Jeez, like a gentleman. Safety bit number two, know your partner's STI status. You should already be getting tested, especially if y'all are having sex with other people, it's your first time having sex, or whatever, it's just been a while. Go get tested. Get tested for STIs. Share your results openly with each other. That's just good practice. Number three, avoid the eyes. To minimize the risk of infection, irritation, or just her having to run to the bathroom while one eye is like in serious pain, try not to get any semen in the eyes. You can close your eyes, you can wear a blindfold, or my personal favorite, you could wear some good old fashioned safety glasses. I don't know what that says about me. You know what, I know exactly what it says about me. It says that I watched the Benny Benassi Satisfaction music video, you know, with the jackhammer and the boobs. And, uh, and I think anyone that watched that around a certain age is gonna be like a little bit turned on by safety goggles. Yeah. Number four, be aware of allergies. If your partner has had an allergic reaction to semen in the past anywhere on her body, chances are that she's gonna have an allergic reaction everywhere on her body. Number five, make sure to clean up properly. After the act, gently clean the face using warm water and gentle soap and be cautious around removing semen from the eyes. Also, if you are at high risk of getting stuff in your eyes, 
take your makeup off first because it's bad enough to have semen in your eye. It's worse to have that mixing with like mascara all at the same time. It's a lot, avoid it. Number six, take it slow. If you're new to facials, start slow. Communicate with your partner through the process. Make sure both parties feel comfortable and safe. Maybe start with a pearl necklace instead. Like, you know, like play with this area, which is a little bit safer and perhaps less kinky and degrading than the face. Number seven, trust and boundaries. As with any sexual activity, trust and respect are critical. If at any point either partner feels uncomfortable and wishes to stop, stop. Use your safe word, honor their boundaries. And by the way, if her boundary is like, this time I only want to do a pearl necklace, I only want ejaculate from here to here, just honor that fing boundary. Don't try to push it. You push it this time, honestly, you don't deserve to ever get your spunk near her ever again, in my opinion. Respect the boundaries, you'll get invited back. Now that we've talked about the risks and how to minimize them with facials, let's talk about what porn stars and other voluminous spunkers, is what I'm gonna say, do to naturally and safely increase their semen volume. By the way, if you wanna also enhance its taste, I did a video on that. It's one of the many reasons that I got banned from TikTok a second time. Let's talk about ejaculate. First of all, you gotta know that your health and the lifestyle that you have contribute to all of your sexual functioning. How hard you get, how frequently you are able to orgasm, how long you can last in bed. And if you want to get and stay hard, make sure that you check out my course, Hard As You Want. I actually lay out step-by-step step everything that you need to know in order to address the physical, psychological, and emotional causes of ED and overcome them so that you can prevent any softness and make sure that you are always able to get as hard as you want. Link is in the description below. So not rocket science, but let me just say it because it's vital here and for the volume of your spunk. Balanced diet, hydration, exercising regularly, sleeping as much as you actually need. They're gonna go so far into making you great in bed. Honestly, it's gonna rock your world. Let's start with hydration. One of the simplest ways to increase your ejaculate volume is just staying Hydrate. It actually makes it taste better too. It's like a win, 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 win. Drink enough water every day to ensure that your body is able to produce an adequate amount of semen and an adequate amount of ejaculate for those semen to swim in. You have to do this for more than just like a couple days. You have to be hydrating for weeks. In fact, if you wanna change the flavor of your semen, you have to change your diet for weeks. And that's exactly what I had my client David do. We started with a plan of getting him healthy fruits, vegetables, yes, it includes pineapple, because I know you're gonna ask. And he started drinking water, this amount of water that his body needed until it actually was able to adjust to taking on that much fluid. And it took a while to get there, but he saw a difference right away. All right, second, nutrition. Obviously, nutrition is vital to all of your sexual health, but there are some specific nutrients that are known to help boost ejaculate volume. L-arginine, which is an amino acid that improves blood flow and sperm production. Foods that are rich in L-arginine include nuts, seeds, legumes, and lean meats. Second is zinc, probably the most popular go-to nutrient for enhancing your frosting abilities. It is essential for healthy testosterone levels and also part of sperm production. And foods that are high in zinc include oysters, beef, pumpkin seeds, and spinach. Next up, vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, helps improve your sperm count, also helps improve your skin and how you taste in my personal experience. Good sources include citrus fruits, strawberries, and bell peppers. Now, if you are interested in increasing your semen volume, you can also supplement. There are different natural and herbal supplements. Again, as with all of this, talk to your doctor. If you have any questions, if you have any chronic health conditions, if you're taking prescription meds, don't just be like playing around. It's matters too much. The first one is maca root. It's a Peruvian plant that has been used for centuries to boost fertility and sexual performance. It also has like a delicious malty taste, malty, M-A-L-T-Y. I like to mix it into all of my protein shakes and smoothies after I exercise. I've been taking it every day for a while and I don't know, I like it personally, so I recommend it. Another that's very popular is called horny goat weed, also known as epimedium. May help improve blood flow and sexual functioning. You can also supplement with L-arginine directly and with zinc. Again, make sure to talk to a expert on your individual case. 
And finally, exercise. Practicing pelvic floor exercise, such as kegels. I have so many videos on how to work out your pelvic floor and the importance of doing reverse kegels as well can help to strengthen the muscles responsible for ejaculation. Now, I don't know that science has proven that doing pelvic floor exercise will actually increase the volume of your ejaculate, but I can say definitively that you will be able to shoot further if you have a strong pelvic floor. You will also have an erection that stands up straighter, salutes a little bit higher, and you'll be more likely able to resist ejaculating before the time has come. Pun unintentional, but I like it. So exercise your pelvic floor, it's good for you. As long as you do the pelvic floor exercises and the reverse kegels the way that I teach them, it is good for you. You will pow, like pew pew, like squirt gun. So in conclusion, if you want to do an amazing facial, share this video, go through the concerns as I outlined, which is exactly what David did with Sally, until Sally was thoroughly excited, consenting, and understood fully how to protect herself, her health, her eye health. During the facial, she was able to excitedly receive the facial. David was very excited after a few weeks of changing his diet, changing his hydration, and implementing what I said about the exercise routine of his pelvic floor. He was able to, uh, let's just say perform in a way that really, really excited him. They ultimately decided to film it. They made a little home video. I didn't watch it, but I heard it was great. And if you follow all the instructions inside of this video, I guarantee you can do the same. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you very, 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 very many happy facials of all kinds. The semen kind, the mud kind, the peeling kind. Go have all the great facials. I want that for you. I'm Caitlin B and I'll see you here next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.